video is for assignment number 22, Kepler's Third Law. According to Kepler's Third Law, there is a relationship between the semi-major axis, or the average distance from the sun of each planet, and the time period for one orbit. We will be calculating the semi-major axis cubed and the time period for one orbit squared, and then plotting these values on an xy plot to look at the correlation. To use this spreadsheet, you can make your calculations by first clicking the equal sign, clicking on the cell that you want to use, and in this case we want to cube the semi-major axis. So rather than typing before, I physically clicked here, used the caret symbol, and then typed the number three, and now I'll press enter on my keyboard. It might have an autofill suggestion, but if that doesn't pop up for you, you can click and drag the blue square all the way down, or you can simply double click on that blue square and it'll fill your data. We'll do the same thing for T squared. So first step, equal sign. Then I'll physically click on the time period for the first cell, caret symbol, two, enter, and I'm gonna use autofill this time. You might have different values depending on how uh, it's rounded. So if you'd like to automatically have the spreadsheet round for you, you can use uh, this tool to change where the decimal place lies so you can add more data points or you can round it like this. I'm going to round to the nearest hundredth. For the last column, I need to plot r cubed by, or divided by, not plot, I'm going to divide r cubed by t squared. So I'm going to type equals, and r cubed is over here, so I'm going to physically click on that cell, backslash, and now the cell for t squared. And I'll press enter, and I'm going to autofill again. Here we go. To verify the relationship, we'll be plotting the semi-major axis cubed with respect to the orbital period squared. I created a data table for my x and y points so that I can easily transfer them to GeoGebra. To fill out your x and y columns, you might have some trouble when you try to copy and paste directly. What I recommend that you do instead is type the equal sign and we want this cell to equal this cell. Enter. Now I can click and drag just like we did before and it copies over the digits. I'll do the same thing with the Y values. Now we're ready to transfer the data to GeoGebra. On GeoGebra, you'll start off by typing a parenthesis, and then you're going to just type in your x and your y value. Once you have your points plotted on the graph, click on the individual points to change their label to be the name of the planet. This pop-up also allows you to change the, the color. You can click the plus and you have more options. 
To add labels to your graph for the X and Y axis, you click on the Tools button and then scroll down to Text. From there, click anywhere in the graph and then you can type what you want. So I'm going to type the label for the Y axis. And since it's a semi-major axis cubed, I can click on advanced and then the Greek symbols and cubed is right. Whoops, wrong one. There we go. And press OK. When you're done with your graph, take a screenshot and add it to your spreadsheet. I was able to copy and paste but if you're having trouble adding your graph, you can always go to insert image and you would want to choose image over cells. After you position your graph so that it doesn't cover your calculations, then you can press submit on Google Classroom.